For the first time in decades, there's a palpable fear of nuclear war in Asia. With North Korean missiles landing close to Japan's shores, relations between the two countries are colder than ever. And Japan's Korean community is feeling the chill more than most. I'm Steve Chow. In this edition of 101 East, we explore life in Japan under North Korea's nuclear shadow. When this siren blares across Japan, people have just 10 minutes to seek cover from a missile attack. Katsuyoshi Horiguchi has planned for this. He designed and built a nuclear bunker behind his daughter's apartment. Horiguchi san. Hi, hi, Des. Very fast, about three minutes. Oh. Is, is that kind of how long it takes to get down here into the bunker? Yes, generally it takes three minutes to get here. That's good. Six minutes is the limit, so three is okay. The retired grandfather believes seven people could survive in this bunker. It's equipped with air purifiers, supplies, and a computer for contacting the outside world. As long as the air purifier works, we can live here in the bunker for one week. There's a lot of food and water under the bed. For the toilet, we put a plastic bag in the bucket. Horiguchi says his bunker is needed now more than ever. In 2017, North Korea tested 23 rockets, including two long-range missiles that landed in Pacific Ocean waters near Japan. What has happened recently that drove you to start building a bunker? When Donald Trump was elected American president, I started to worry that North Korea and the USA would start fighting and go to war. I started researching, found parts from Switzerland, and started building in January 2017. An avid outdoorsman, he fears a missile strike could contaminate and destroy the environment he loves. Horiguchi worries his government is blindly following America's aggressive approach to North Korea. Well, more than half of Japanese people agree with America attacking North Korea. I think this is very dangerous. Abe is going to exploit that and purchase missiles for the military. I think we are facing a very dangerous situation. Being tough on North Korea helped Shinzo Abe win his fourth term as Prime Minister. He claims it poses the biggest threat to Japan since World War II. The pacifist nation is investing in missile defence systems, increasing sanctions and pushing a tough diplomatic line against the regime. Shinzo Abe sees clearly that now is the time for us to show a consolidated front against North Korea. If there is any small spot for misunderstanding, misinterpretation, that's going to be uh, tantamount for you to showing weakness, and weakness invites uh, provocation. Professor Tomohiko Tanaguchi is the Prime Minister's foreign affairs advisor. The sheer tempo and pace with which North Korea has uh, come very much uh, a long way to build its nuclear arsenal and missile technology have been a surprise for every one of us, including the Japanese, Chinese, 
and the Americans, uh, unlike other nuclear powers, uh, they say that, that they are willing to use the weapon. And uh, I think that uh, shocked a lot of people. It's also put the country on high alert. Since last year, authorities have been staging evacuation drills to prepare citizens for a potential attack. In the past, these evacuation drills have been held in rural prefectures in places like schools and public buildings. This is the first time such an event has happened in the capital, Tokyo. Kunding. Kunding. In this subway station, every second of this 10-minute exercise is choreographed. Our enemy is the lack of knowledge. You must be prepared. Uh, and you should control the uh, people's minds so that they would not panic. That's something that you must avoid at all cost. As tensions rise, members of Japan's ethnic Korean community are feeling the pressure. Yeah. Shin Gil Ung is the principal of a Tokyo high school aligned to the North Korean regime. I always have this fear that our people's freedom and movement will be restricted. Many of these school children are descendants of Koreans brought here as prisoners or slave labour during World War II. When Korea split in two, many in Japan's Korean community pledged allegiance to the North. As a result, their schools and businesses have always been viewed with suspicion. Whenever there's an excuse, the police use all sorts of nonsensical reasons to come and search our schools in raids. If we go to war, our community may face a severe crisis. Under the watchful eyes of North Korea's leaders, Students here learn in both Korean and Japanese. Every year, the regime gives $2 million to a network of kindergartens, schools and universities across Japan. The most important thing we teach the students is that they can contribute to reunite Korea. Here in our school, our goal is not to teach communism. Our goal is to teach the students how to live as Koreans within Japanese society. Parents do not want a North Korean education for their children. Their wish is for their children to speak the language and learn the culture and live as proud Korean people in Japan. That's why they send their children here. But it's North, not South Korea, they identify with. In their senior year, these school students go on a two-week excursion to Pyongyang. For most of them, it's the first and only time they'll visit North Korea. Myself and other people here, we own cars, we go for holidays. It's unrealistic for us, who have these sorts of lifestyles, to go back to North Korea. The day we go back to the motherland will be when Korea is unified, prosperous and free. I'm meeting up with 15-year-old Ryong Song to hear what the students think. It's lunchtime and the canteen is a hive of activity. Feeling like the new kid at school, I try to get to know Ryong Song. 
おいしいですかおいしいおいしいおいしいおいしいおいしい I was expecting this school to be very strict, very regimented. I'm surprised at how casual things go on here. Yes, there are many strict rules. But among my friends, we chat, we discuss, and we're having a great time. Ryong Song's grandparents migrated here during the Korean War. His parents are divorced, and he lives with his mother and brother. When you grow up, what do you want to be? I want to be a carpenter. Carpenter? Yeah. History is one of his favourite subjects, so I ask him how his understanding of the past shapes his views. The Korean peninsula used to be one country. It was divided into two countries. But we still think about it the same way, that we're all Koreans. That's what we're learning in school. And I think it is very important to keep this feeling that we are one. The teachers educate us about history and the current problems. And the teachers ask us to keep watching what's happening because it is our motherland. Now there's a lot of talk about missile issues. But for myself, I really want them to solve the situation. I'm hoping that Japan and Korea will have a good relationship in future. I ask him what he knows about America's criticism of the regime. Well, we haven't covered these things in detail. Not in detail. The principal says the school teaches history from both the Japanese and North Korean perspective. When we teach North Korea's political system, we explain Pyongyang's point of view. But for social studies, we don't teach Pyongyang's point of view. We reflect how Japanese school is teaching. Otherwise, our students won't pass the college entrance exam. He admits that the North Korean heroes in their textbooks are seen as terrorists in Japan. None more so than the two men that shaped North Korea. But someone's missing. Why is there no portrait of Kim Jong-un, the current leader, up on the classroom walls? Regarding Kim Jong-un, so far we don't have any direct guidance or support from him. So, I don't think about hanging up his picture. Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il are the leaders who show us continuous support in our school's 70-year history. So, we hang up their portraits to show our appreciation. This loyalty comes at a cost. Japan's government recently slashed funding for any schools with ties to North Korea. What uh, makes it legitimate for taxpayers to spend their money on institutions that are constantly telling pupils that the Japanese are your enemies? It, does, it just does not make sense. The school that you talked about uh, is legitimizing everything that North Korea does do you want to send your children to that school? That's the question that those parents must ask themselves very seriously. Ryong Song can't understand the criticisms of his school. We use the internet freely. There are no restrictions. This is not the time to think only about Korea. We are taught we shouldn't just criticize Japan. He certainly seems like any other 15-year-old schoolboy. Cheeky and full of surprises. Uh, what do you like? What do I like? 
Music? Ongaku? Ongaku? Yeah. What, what, what about you? What do you like? I like magic. Magic? Yes. Magic. Can you, can you show us a trick? Do you yeah. have any... Oh, look. A coin trick. Whoa! Kushigi des! Kushigi des! That's not the only trick Ryong Song has up his sleeve. This year, he made it onto the school's prestigious boxing team. Today, they're training for an upcoming competition. His father wanted him to play soccer, but Ryong Song's passion is to be in the ring. If I become professional, I want to be a representative of my home country, Korea. That's another thing his father may not want to hear. When I go out to eat with my father, he hides that he is Korean. I don't like that because in my heart, I always want to be Korean. I always think about that. But he understands his father is just trying to protect him. I remember when I was in kindergarten, I say, this is my name, and I'm Korean. My friends say, ah, my mother and father told me that is the country where bad people live. Since then, I've realized that many people here think this way. In this tense political climate, a number of far-right groups are stoking these divisions. We're outside the South Korean embassy, where the authorities work hard to stop a number of trucks driven by far-right protesters. Japan's new hate speech laws ban such groups from demonstrating in public places. So to get around the laws, they use trucks to keep moving. It's actually really hard to follow these trucks because the protesters stop for five minutes, spout some hate speech and then just drive on. When they struggle to get closer to the embassy, their anger soon turns to us. And right wing activists are taking things even further. In late February, Tokyo's early morning quiet was shattered when two men were arrested for allegedly firing multiple gunshots at North Korea's de facto embassy. We meet with one of the prime movers behind these right-wing groups. Hiroyuki Seto is the leader of a new political party called Japan First. He supports Prime Minister Abe's strong stance against North Korea. We should start war immediately. That's my view. When war starts, North Korea will be destroyed and disappear. When there is no nation, the North Korean schools here will be shut down. Seto admits that he has organized a number of demonstrations against Koreans. He defends these aggressive methods, 
saying many migrants are funneling millions of dollars to the North Korean regime through their businesses. Actually, I think some of them who claim to be South Korean nationals are actually close to North Korea. There is a hidden ideology behind them. Now that he can no longer hold demonstrations, Seto takes his right-wing message online. My actions aren't hate speech. They are normal activities. Hate speech law doesn't restrict any of our activities. But when pressed, Seto has had enough. There is no question about North Korea. There are many questions about hate speech. I don't want to answer any more. I don't have time. Let me just explain. Those people who support hate speech laws are left-wing. The hate speech laws are made by those who are trying to suppress our voice. We fight against dangerous people. We don't fight with those who pose no threat to us. Don't worry about it. Okay. That's it. Hate speech laws are a positive step for a country notoriously cold on immigration. Do, do you feel the hate speech laws have to be stronger? Well, in theory, there is room for those laws to be strengthened, but this challenge is going to be something that is not going away. We have to live with it. While others may target them, Koreans like Ryong Song are getting on with their lives. Today, his boxing team is competing against a prestigious Japanese high school. There is so much equipment and lots of pictures. I feel this school must be very well established. Right now, I am nervous. But even if your cameras weren't here, I would still try to give 100% of my best. Ryong Song will be fighting a Japanese boy he's met before at other events. Do you think you have the, the skills to beat him? I'm not confident I'll win, but I'll do my best. When the competition begins, the Korean team is on the back foot. Soon, it's Ryong Song's turn to contest three rounds. He's slow to start, and his opponent lands more punches. As the bout continues, Ryong Song fights back, attacking in short bursts. But it's not enough. I didn't do well. I was so nervous, my feet couldn't move. And I got punched by my opponent. This is something I need to work on. When the contest ends, there is no animosity. The two teams start training together. My philosophy is, in the ring, it doesn't matter who the opponent is. Out of the ring, I'm building friendship. For Ryong Song, 
Competing here is about more than chasing the glory of victory. Through sport, I like to tell them, we are not bad people. We are not hostile. And everyone should get along. I would like to erase the bad image of North Korea. And if I win, I can show everyone that I did it as a Korean. That's how I feel.